All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna do a pruning demo for you guys on some of the more mature fig trees that I have. This is a Smith, this is a younger Smith, and this is actually a newly grafted tree here. We may even do uh, one or two other trees I have here to my, uh, my left. We will demonstrate in another video for you guys the young trees, so trees that are, let's say, a year or two old. Uh, those are my more experimental varieties here off to my right. And because the principles are different between this and that, because these older trees should have the right form, or at least they should have close to the right form, whereas these younger trees, we're really trying to stress that form of getting them established so that they can get to this point here a lot quicker. Um, we're also gonna do a video on pruning the in-ground trees, and we use the cut and cover method of winter protection, so there's not a whole lot to that. But there is something really, really important I want to show you guys about that. Now, if you have an in-ground tree that you guys live in a warm place and it's a tree form and it's actually quite established and it has, you know, some good age to it, um, maybe it looks something like this here on my right, but it's much larger, right? This is what you guys are going to kind of go for. So this is going to translate well for you guys. You can apply the same principles. Just because your tree is in the ground doesn't mean that you can't follow these same rules that I'm about to give you guys. Because essentially, the in-ground trees that you guys might have are just a much larger version of this. And that's what you should be sort of following um, as well. So um, I do want to mention one other thing before we start, and that there's one really, really important key to this whole thing. If you can get this right, you know how to prune fig trees. If you don't get this right, you're kind of lost. And not that I was lost in my prior videos of pruning, because I've done a number of videos now on pruning these fig trees. And I have to say, we've learned quite a bit in the last year, just on something called light penetration. And getting the most maximum light into the canopy, into the center of your tree, and making sure that these branches, these fruiting branches here, are spaced really well is the key to getting a very productive fig tree. Doesn't matter if it's in a pot, doesn't matter if it's in the ground, the same principles apply. Now this also really means if you're doing this as a, a tree, let's say you have yourself a trunk, right? And then you have yourself some scaffolds. So the scaffolds are permanent. These scaffolds here, believe it or not, if this is the main trunk of the tree, it's starting out quite high. It's pretty it's gonna be a pretty tall tree. It's like almost four and a half feet tall. But this, these scaffolds here become permanent and ideally these scaffolds should be quite large. So if you take a look at my Smith tree here, that's one of my more mature trees at this point, you can see it has the main trunk down here at the bottom. Hopefully you guys can get a, a view of this. You can see this main trunk down here at the bottom. This might be your tree at home. Maybe it's in the ground, maybe it's in a pot, but here's the main trunk. And then we have it scaffold off in two different directions. But the, here's the issue here, guys, and what I've learned is that the distance between these two scaffolds really is not all that great. And because Smith is quite an erect grower, it grows kind of straight up in the air rather than more on an angle, this tree really suffers from a lack of light penetration into the canopy. The best way to get more light into your tree is actually to bend your scaffolds. So we're gonna focus a lot on that actually in the spring because I'm gonna put my trees away for the winter time. But when I come out here in the spring, I'm gonna be focusing on really separating these scaffolds or separating the fruiting branches, widening out the canopy. Um, and even if you had, let's say a tree that was a bush shape and had a couple trunks from the base is that you really wanna make sure that you're spreading out those trunks at the base. It, you know, it really doesn't matter if you have one trunk or not. You know, here's an example right here. I have two trunks coming from the base, but look how far apart they are. So this is a good example. Even this branch maybe should be a little bit further out. And I don't, I don't have an exact science to this, guys, but I will say that if you have far and wide scaffolds, from the start, you do this right from the beginning. It's kind of like having the right soil, right? You gotta have the right soil to start to set your tree up for success. It makes things a lot easier. 
Well, it also makes things a lot easier if you train your trees the right way and have scaffolds off on a wide angle. If you have them on a wide angle, you know, almost like, uh, I don't even know what the degree is, but I guess this is 180. Instead of a 90 degree angle, let's say, so this is a, this is a 90 degree angle, right? We want our branches more like this. So this is probably, I don't know, 60 degree angle, something like that. Um, you know, probably somewhere around 55 to 65 an angle. We don't want it necessarily horizontal. I mean, that could be okay in certain situations, but our scaffolds really should be far apart and spread out on a nice angle. Cause that, what that does is like, just picture this tree here for a second here, guys. When I do this, what happens? We're allowing all this light to now come into the center of the tree. These branches here can now be successful. These branches can now have actually fruit on them because believe it or not, this tree here is so dense. It's such a, almost like a cylindrical tree. Like it's so erect. It's not really wide enough that the center of the tree really didn't fruit at all this year for me. It was mainly these branches here on the outside edge that had enough sunlight. Because believe it or not, here's the most important thing you need to know is that if you don't have enough light penetration into the canopy or along these branches, the fruit buds will just not form. It doesn't matter how nutritious your soil is. It doesn't matter if you get all the nutrients right, you get all the water right, you got all, even just the sunlight hours right. You need to have the sunlight penetration. It's not just enough to have them in eight hours of light. It's not just enough to have them in, you know, the right metabolism to have the soil temperature somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees. It's not enough. You got to have that sunlight penetration to get these fruits to actually form along the branches. So here's an example here. The distance between this fruiting branch and this fruiting branch is really only about five inches. That's really just way too close. And I would argue if this was the case, it's a much further distance. And these branches that are now way further out here that are being bent also have access to more sunlight just because of the way the angle comes in here and hits the tree. So it's really, really important in that when we're pruning, we are thinking about this solely. This is our main goal here is to think about how the sunlight penetration is going to come into our tree next year so that we can make uh, so we can really have a productive fig tree because believe it or not, you know, some trees you could make an argument just based off of their genetics. You could say, well, this variety Smith is not productive. And you could say, well, this variety is productive. But a lot of that is based on you. A lot of this, believe it or not, I've learned over, you know, how many years I've been doing this now. It's based on your pruning. So if you can get the form right, and have this open, who's to say that Smith isn't a productive variety? And that's my argument, because there is actually quite a bit of people who believe that Smith is not very productive. But that's where you're wrong in that you have to have the right form. Because Smith is such an upright, erect grower, we have to spread it out. So I'm gonna focus on that next year. I'm not really too worried about that. What I'm gonna do is actually take myself some stakes, and I'm gonna just stake these branches away from each other, just to open this canopy. I may even have four, um, four stakes here to keep these branches away. Now what that means, if I'm gonna do that, if I have this in mind, this pretty much four scaffolds, these are gonna be my new scaffolds for the most part. If I have this in mind, then I need to think about that before I do my pruning, right? Before I do any of my cuts. So if this branch is like this, do I not like any of these branches? Well, I actually like this branch down here and I do like this branch up here. This one I could probably do without or I could completely cut this one out down here. So I have the option because what's gonna end up happening is that this branch is pretty darn close to this one. So what I'm gonna do, well, they're not that they're close, but they're, they're on the same side of the tree. They're getting sort of the same sunlight. So that's what I'm going to do is that this branch down here is far enough from this one and they're growing in two different directions. Also, this one here doesn't have a whole lot of dominance just yet. 
because this branch has gotten all the dominance, right? It's at the highest, the highest point. We really want all the branches to be at the same height, roughly, uh, after we're done our pruning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut out this entire branch right here. And that's essentially, if you think about it, we're gonna have nice branches next year. They're gonna leaf out over here and there's gonna be nice branches over here that are gonna leaf out. So this is gonna create a nice canopy right in this area. Now let's think about the right side of the tree. And the same thing can kind of be said for this side of the tree is what I could do is actually take out this top branch, prune this whole thing out, and then I am left with the same situation on the other side of the tree. So I'm gonna do that. And now we have, again, branches that are, again, going away from each other. We're expanding that canopy. You could also really, what you, you might wanna do let's move on to this tree as an example, is that some of the scaffolds here, I have three scaffolds. We have a main trunk, three scaffolds. What you really probably wanna do is actually let these scaffolds continue to grow in length because if you don't let them get far enough out, right? We need to bend these branches, as I said. As I bend these out, that's really key for opening up the canopy. But they need to be long first because if they're not long enough this is a very compact tree it's very very compact there's a lot of nodes it's very dense it probably didn't really grow all that well this year very tight node spacing probably could get away with uh, feeding this tree a bit more next year because what I really want is actually to open up this canopy as I mentioned and to have these branches really going a bit further so we're going to take out this branch here because really I, I want to just keep my scaffolds. I want to keep my scaffolds. I have three, right? Ideally on a tree form or even on a bush form, you want somewhere between two to five scaffolds. So if it's a bush, just imagine that the scaffolds start at the soil. You know, it's not much different. It's just that the scaffolds are now higher. If it's a tree, you can have the scaffolds start at any height you want. And the higher they go, the bigger your tree is gonna get. So if you have scaffolds down, let's say at your knee, it's gonna be a much smaller tree like this guy right here. So if I had the scaffolds up higher, like this tree is, for sure it's gonna be taller. But also, let me get you this example. Kinda lost our microphone here, guys, one second. But See this tree actually right here, the scaffolds start kind of almost at my chest. This is actually almost the same height as this guy. And now it's a much larger tree, you know? Some of these guys are a lot less simple to think about because it's really just a matter of opening up this canopy and taking out what's ever in the center. So as an example, I'm gonna take out on this tree, this branch right here, I'm going to take out this branch that's growing pretty much towards the center. And then that leaves me, in a sense, with four scaffolds that are really quite far apart. Hopefully you guys can see this, where we have one growing towards you, one off to the right, one off to the left, and one towards me. This should give the tree enough light penetration. However, there is a scaffold right back here that's not really all that vigorous, and therefore what I probably should do is actually take back the growth on some of these branches. And I think that it's exactly what I'll do. And I'm, sh this is, I'm shortening the length of the scaffolds, which in a sense, you might not want to do. You know, this could be very detrimental actually to the sunlight, can the, the light penetration, right? As I said, on this smaller tree that's more compact, I need to actually lengthen these scaffolds. So as an example, we took out this one. Now this branch is really quite long, and this is now gonna branch out in this area, which is good, which means I need to take out this branch. So that is then gonna branch out over here and create its own little canopy on this side of the tree. And also it's then lengthening the scaffold which then enables me, if I wanted to, sort of bend the scaffolds away from each other. 
it's much more difficult to bend this down here. I could very easily bend the longer growth, which is really what you want to do anyway. And then of course this stuff down here isn't going to do a whole lot for me. But I will keep this third scaffold here to create a canopy in this side of the, uh, this area of the tree. And this tree back here, let's just say we could take this down a little bit. I don't want to take this one down too much, but I almost want to say, let's just take the whole thing out because then I'm left with three scaffolds that are really well spaced and there's a lot less chance of sunlight penetration or of not having enough sunlight penetration. So I could, if I wanted to, and this is where you really should think about things a little bit. Do I really want to take this out? And well, I could, if I wanted to instead, just bring it back in height. And if I bring it back in height to an outward growing bud, am I satisfied with that? Not really, because what's going to end up happening, I imagine, is that this particular branch is going to grow into this particular branch. So these two scaffolds are just too close. And that's kind of what you really want is those longer scaffolds, right? So I actually think, and I probably prefer, I'm just going to take out this whole thing. So there it is. There's the final form of this tree. And again, it's going to form nice fruiting wood here, fruiting branches here, fruiting branches there, and fruiting branches there. This tree here, which we kind of skipped over, all I did was actually take off the growth tips because what I want to do, if you want the tree to branch out and form a canopy in either direction, you got to take off the tip. At the very minimum, we should be taking off the tip. And I, I would argue that some of these trees need a lot less pruning than others. Like this one, like I said, very minimal to get the form established. This here, this form is established. This here, this form is established. So at this point, it's really just regulating, if we want, regulating the fruiting branches and the number of fruiting branches, which we've mentioned in other pruning videos that you guys are really welcome to check out if you would like. So this one here, we're going to basically bend. Let's go back to this original Smith because we're not done with this. The left and right scaffolds are done. This back scaffold, when I bend this down a little bit is going to create an issue with sunlight. So we're going to take out this piece of growth, which is going to lengthen the scaffold. And then the same thing actually with this one, but this one seems pretty good. I definitely like this branch here. The only issue I could foresee is that this growth down here doesn't do a whole lot for me. Um, we're going to take off the tip. Can't forget to do that just to get it to branch out. Um, same thing over here, take off the tip, take off the tip. Another one there. And then the only thing that's left is really this branch down here. And this guy down here really doesn't have any light that's gonna get to this. It's gonna be very minimal. In fact, it did not fruit for me this year because it didn't have any light. And I remembered very specifically looking at some of these trees, which branches fruited, which ones didn't. And I know that this one didn't because it was just so low on the tree that the canopy up top was shading what was down below. So that's really, really key here, guys. I can't really stress this enough. Um, as I said, I think we want to focus on that light penetration more than anything. This is the key to getting very productive fig trees is really thinning out the center, getting everything exposed and a little bit wider. That's what a fig tree likes to do. It has a crown. This is what they call a crown. The outside of the tree it creates a nice little crown because it doesn't necessarily have one single point. Um, it forms multiple points that form a crown. So if you try to get a wider crown, especially on varieties that are more erect, you're just going to have much more success. This variety here I also have noticed is quite erect as well. And we'll turn you guys around and do one more tree, I think. This is one of my more mature trees back here. Uh, 
There's, a, there's probably a couple more points I want to mention. I just don't remember what they are. So maybe as I do this, we'll figure it out. But here's a good example. This is actually two varieties grafted onto the same rootstock. And it's forming a, essentially one tree. You know, a lot of the growth actually is going um, this way. And then we need to kind of make it go that way. So what we're going to do, we are going to prune out what's, what's, whatever's in the center. Got to take that out. So this is going to immediately come out. All the stuff in the center, that's going to just be just too shaded. This stuff down here is just too low. Probably won't get enough sunlight. This down here is too low. And it's almost like, well, no wonder this particular variety wasn't productive. I mean, look at the form. Look at the shape of this thing. It's just not getting enough light. This up here fruited for me and was getting enough light, and that's why it fruited. You know, so it's really important, I think. What I'm gonna do is probably take out even this and take out this entire thing back here because it just doesn't have the right form. Now this branch can stay here. We can uh, bend this branch a little bit towards this way. We can take off the tip so that it will branch out. That leaves some of this growth back here, which I don't think we necessarily need it to really branch out too much more this way. But see, this branch is great over here because this is getting a lot of light. The issue then becomes is that we have to take, make a choice. And I think I'm going to take this branch out here. And the same thing I, I sort of did over there with the smith, the, the more mature smith, is that we're going to take out the branch that's growing in the same direction um, to kind of give each side of the, the scaffold enough light. And I think that's mostly it. I mean, what else do we need to really... We need to definitely evaluate this, and I need to think about this a bit more. But let's take off the tips. This one's missing already um, take that one off that one's missing that's good and I know you should go without saying any damaged or diseased wood you can take that out don't hesitate um, there is something I did want to mention and that's rejuvenation pruning so if you have a mature tree that just isn't performing well, it could just be that your tree is not very healthy. And I've talked a lot about this topic and I won't go into it too much. You can see our other videos on rejuvenation pruning, but I might, as an example, just completely cut this tree way back and reform that, that form next year. Um, and try to actually hope for maybe a, a uh, not a scaffold, but a, a sucker that comes up from the vase. Because those suckers actually are going to be very healthy, especially if they come from the roots. That's really what we're trying to do is get something from the roots. They're probably not going to have anywhere near as much fig mosaic virus. The wood itself isn't going to be all that damaged or diseased or unhealthy. So you're creating a nice successful base for your tree. And that's really, really important. And we're going to get into that more with these very young trees, the experimental trees in that video. And obviously you guys can see more about that. But what I would just recommend is that you got to get this whole thing, this form, situated right first uh, before you can even get to this point, before you can get to all these little details here. So, you know, don't waste your time, in my opinion, with a tree that really isn't all that healthy. You're better off just cutting the whole thing back. And I've done that in so many trees I have now. Um, it works out really, really well. It doesn't work every single time but it certainly will rejuvenate the health of your tree uh, most of the time, assuming you can get a sucker from the base. Now, if this is a grafted tree, maybe not the best idea, but we'll see everybody soon, all right? Hope you guys, uh, you got a lot out of this. You learned something about the light penetration because that's where it's all at. It really is where all the money is. If you get that, if you understand that, I know it's maybe a little simple for most people. I'm sure there's gonna be somebody in the comments that's like, oh, Ross, this was, such a stupidly easy video. Well, you know, why aren't you making the videos then? So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. I always love talking about it. 
We'll see everybody soon. Hit that subscribe button for me. Take care, everybody.